Hi there and welcome to the Atheist Dominion. My name's Rob. You know, as an atheist, I'm always being told by the religiously devout that I'm going to hell unless I repent and believe in God. Others tell me that they'll pray for me, which is nice. One commentator even accused me of wanting to set myself up as God simply because I didn't believe in his God. Right. So which God do you want me to believe in? There's so many to choose from. There's so many hundreds of religions and so many hundreds of gods. Which one? Which one do you want me to believe in? We begin with Ahura Mazda, supreme god of Zoroastrianism, a once vast religion covering much of the Middle East long before Judaism and Islam appeared. There's still about 180,000 adherents to this very ancient religion. Allah, the god of Islam, of course. Anu from Mesopotamia, god of the sky and part of a collection of gods called the Anunnaki. His queen consort was Asherah. There's El from the Levantine, the supreme god of the Canaanites and the first god of Israel. Asherah also appears as his wife. There's Apona, Celtic goddess of fertility and protector of horses and ponies. Ganesha, a deity in Hinduism, which has about a billion followers today. John Frum of Vanuatu. This is a tiny embryonic religion which began in World War II and based on the idea of an American serviceman once again returning to bring cargo and supplies to the islanders. Jupiter from ancient Rome, often compared to the Greek god Zeus. Kakulkan, a god from the Mayan civilization. There's Marduk from Babylonia. Ogun from Nigeria. Osiris from ancient Egypt. He was, among other things, the god of resurrection and regeneration. Rangi and Papa, the father sky and mother earth of Polynesian mythology. Thor from the Norse countries. He's now kind of worshipped at the box office. Viracocha from the Incas of South America. Vishnu, also from the Hindu faith. Zeus from ancient Greece, chief god of all the Greek gods. But let's be honest, the one God that you all want me to believe in is your Christian God. So where did God come from? What are his origins? God's earliest name is perhaps something like Yahweh, the late Bronze Age or early Iron Age God of Israel and Judah. He's known as a national God, gods uh, who had a specific focus on a, uh, a particular ethnic group, which therefore means there were a lot of national gods to be found across the Levant and the Middle East. Another example of a national god is Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, a people directly to the east of the Israelites. The name of God is found through four letters of the Hebrew alphabet, Y, H, W, H, that make up the name of the Creator. A possible meaning behind the name could be being or he is, but it is very difficult to know how the word was originally pronounced especially because Paleo-Hebrew, Old Hebrew, didn't use vowels. It is possible that the origin of Yahweh was as a storm god. Psalms 18, 29 and 68, 32 to 33, amongst others, may refer to this aspect of his beginnings, often described in conjunction with things such as thunderstorms, cloud, winds and lightning. Other Levantine male deities such as Baal also were known as storm gods. Shasu has been identified with the lands of Edom to the south of Israel and Midian, which was further south again, perhaps around the area of the Gulf of Aqaba. Interestingly, according to tradition at least, Moses came across the burning bush in a region that is thought of as being in the far reaches of Midian territory. The Shasu tribes may have migrated from their desert lands in far northern Arabia and settled in the Samarian and Judean hills in the 13th century BCE and brought their storm god Yahweh with them. Apparently the earliest textual mention of the term Yahweh comes from the reigns of the Egyptian pharaohs Amenhotep III in the 14th century BCE and Ramesses II in the 13th century BCE. They talk about the land of the Shasu of Yahweh. This was at a time when the worship of many gods known as polytheism was common in the Levant and across the Middle East. And this leads us to an interesting and much overlooked aspect about the early development of God, the possibility that he had a female partner. 
Her name was Asherah, a mother goddess also linked to the Mesopotamian god Anu and to El of the Canaanites. She appears alongside Yahweh in this carving from what may have been a shrine in northern Sinai and dated to either the 9th or 8th centuries BCE. The inscription accompanying the figure reads, I have blessed you by Yahweh of Samaria and his Asherah, plus Yahweh of Temen and his Asherah. Samaria was both a region of land and an ancient city. It was the capital of northern Israel in the 9th and 8th centuries BCE, while Teman has been identified with a town or region in Edom. The words his Asherah could signify his wife, his partner, his consort, or his female symbolic figure, and it is still open to much debate. But there she is, right next to this early version of the Jewish and Christian God, a reminder that God was once part of a large and diverse pantheon, of other gods. The name of Yahweh is also found on the Mesha stone, erected in around 840 BCE by the Moabites. The stone talks about how the Israelites had subjugated the Moabites and later how they had succeeded in throwing off Israelite control. It appears that during their captivity in Babylon in the 6th century BCE, and it was probably only the intellectuals, doctors, lawmakers, teachers, etc. who were taken, the Israelites reformed their religious beliefs to focus on one single deity, their national god Yahweh. This is the beginning of monotheism in the Jewish faith. As a result, Asherah begins to disappear, as do all the other gods and deities once so popular, allowing Yahweh himself to reign on his own, signalling the rise of monotheism. The knowledge of Asherah was wiped, leaving a purely masculine deity. In 2 Chronicles 34, 7 it says he tore down the altars and the asherah poles and crushed the idols to powder and cut to pieces all the incense altars throughout israel then he went back to jerusalem we get another glimpse of yahweh in the fourth century bce showing him on a coin here he is seated on a winged chariot holding a bird in one hand this is quite different from the modern idea of what god looks like there was an early Israelite fear of uttering the name of their God as it was considered too holy. So they called him Adonai, which means Lord, as well as Elohim, which is the generic term for God in the Hebrew Bible. Yahweh, this male God, had changed and evolved and was now elevated to supreme deity status, while all the other gods and goddesses were vilified and destroyed. And of course, his offspring could only be a male, Jesus. Today, Yahweh is also known by some as Jehovah, a term that first appeared in the late medieval period, and he is worshipped today under various names as the God of the Jewish, Christian, and Islamic faiths. So in a nutshell, that's the development and history of the God we know today as the God of the Bible and Torah and uh, Quran. But he's the guy you want me to worship. I'm just wondering why I have to worship this God. All you people saying to me that I'm going to go to hell if I don't worship him. Well, from this information, it seems clear that the concept of the Judeo-Christian God grew and changed and was altered and was a product of his time. We can see through historical research, through the analysis of um, Egyptian texts and carved stones and uh, uh, various remains from archaeological digs that the concept of God that we now have today is uh, it shows a progression of belief and development. The God today isn't the same God that was around 1000 BC from Shasu or with the early Canaanites. Now of course I'm just an atheist. And I'm always told that I'm deluded because I don't accept God. But you know what? I, I looked into the history of God. I did a fair bit of research into it. And he was a very different God 3,000 years ago. Having a female offsider or companion, being a national God of the Israelites, when the neighboring tribes had their own national gods, I see a fascinating story about the development of the Judeo-Christian God. Absolutely fascinating. I've learned a lot. The fates of history could have given us a different God. I don't believe in God because I can see 
how he's developed and changed and evolved over the past 3,000 years. You want to believe in that God? That's fine, that's up to you. But I still don't see why you're telling me that I'm going to hell because I don't believe in your God. When it's clear that your God was once a very different God indeed. Something to think about. Thanks for watching, and as always, hit the subscribe button if you like my channel, and I'll see you again soon.